Hey there everybody. So a question that I get all the time is what kind of a camera should I have for making content for my veterinary practice? And I think that's a great question in general. Um, I think the answer to that is number one, the, the camera that you're going to actually use. So anytime that you add additional technology to your stack in the process, it's going to add production time. And so if you want to, if you don't have time and you're not creating content already, then getting more equipment is not necessarily going to help you um, because it's going to add more work to your workflow. So it's important that you just make content that you can actually make. So if that's live video or something, then so be it. But I'm going to share with you three uh, cameras that I think are great options for you to consider. I think that probably almost everybody would be covered by this. Um, the only exception is if you are going to become like a cinematic vlog maker and you want to have a lot more production value. But if you're just a small, you know, like you just want to start making content and videos and educational videos and stuff for your business, then this is going to be some solid options. And I'm going to share them side by side with you. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is this camera, which is my iPhone XS. I think the iPhones are fantastic because the audio quality is good. The video quality is good and it is just in general good enough. Now the problem a lot of people have with using their iPhones is that they can't give them to people if they have employees, they, they can't hand off their phone necessarily, um, their batteries die, they use it for other things, they get calls that interrupt their their content making. Um, if you're doing a time lapse or something and then you get a phone call, it disrupts it and then stops it, right? Or maybe your battery dies or you know there could be a million things. So I think that the, the iPhones are fantastic but if you want to have something that's dedicated and that you use and you have built into your schedule and things, then probably going for something else. And it really depends on, again, if you're actually making content. If you're not, just start using your iPhone. Um, if you buy a camera and you're not doing anything right now, maybe you'll start. Maybe it'll motivate you to start. But also maybe you just don't have it sitting there. Um, so that is one thing to consider. Now, the next camera that I want to talk about so real quick here, the iPhones are fantastic because they have 1080 forward-facing cameras, 4K rear-facing cameras. They do 4K at 60 frames a second, 1080 at 120 frames a second. So they're amazing cameras. They can do time lapses. They can do photos. They're just amazing. So for those reasons, I think that that's really cool. You can also edit really, really easily in iMovie on the phone or in other programs if you wanted to import your, your stuff into like... Um, Premiere Pro or other things you can do that easily but having something on the go that you can use to edit right away and get a good production out of that's amazing for sure so iPhones fantastic the next there are the other two cameras and I'm shooting this on the iPhone right now because I want to show you what these other ones are I have the Canon EOS M50 which I think is a really good camera and then a GoPro Hero 7 Black which I love too Let's talk about the Hero Black first. Now, the Hero is really easy to use. There's only two buttons on it. Um, I like that the camera has a display on the back so you can see what you're filming. Previous GoPros had a big problem with audio quality, and that was, they were just were not, you could only use it for action stuff, right? So there was no way to actually talk to the camera or have audio be usable. Um, and it makes sense. Um, so with this camera, it's pretty cool because not only does it do portrait or landscape like this, it also does portrait. So you'll see that the display will switch. So now that you can see in portrait and it'll show you the camera is in portrait mode. And that's cool because you can use it for Instagram um, stories, which is a huge thing. This will actually live stream too. So you can connect this to your Facebook account. It will live stream. It has a very cool feature that's called time warp. I'll show you what that looks like, but basically it's a motion time lapse. And it, that's just an engaging piece of content that looks different. Um, so I really like this camera for those reasons. It is a super wide angle lens too. So if you're in a small exam room, it's easy to get like, see how close this is to my face and I'm hitting, I'm getting everything in the frame there. So um, like it's, it's pretty ri ridiculous on how, how easy it is to, to use. Um, I, I also like that the app, the GoPro app, lets you download the, the photos to your phone and then edit from there. So I'll show you what this looks like and sounds like so you can compare them side to side here at the very end of the video. And then you can see kind of what the difference levels are um, in general. But it's very simple to use. You don't have to edit a lot of settings inside of it. You just turn it on and point and shoot. And oftentimes, like if you just want to catch something that's interesting going on in the practice, um, if you just hit the red button, it'll just start recording. And 
you can also pull frames from the videos to actually extract a picture, which is really cool too. So I love that for that reason. You can create really interesting, engaging content. And now with, with the audio quality from these, it's amazing in my opinion. So it's something really, really cool. Okay, the last camera that we're gonna talk about is, um, I just got this uh, about a month ago and I love this camera. So it's an EOS M50. It does 4K. Um, it is cropped though, so that means that it is very close um, in distance. So the sensor, what happens is that the sensor, the 4K sensor is really, really cropped. And so it makes it. So as I was making this video on my iPhone, I just got a phone call. And so it interrupted my video production. So that's maybe, maybe that's something that you want to consider. All right. So this one though, I was mentioning that the, the sensor gets cropped on 4K. So then you have not the wide angle lens that you're going to look for in doing close videos. You're going to have to have it on a tripod a little bit further away to get your face if you're going to talk to it in 4K. I don't know that you'd want to necessarily record it in 4K um, for like an education video when you're talking to the camera like this. Um, but it does 4K at 24 frames a second. It does 1080 at 60 frames a second, at 30 frames a second, and 24 frames a second. And then it does 720 at 120 frames a second, which is kind of cool. This also has time lapse built into it. You have customizable menus in here. You have all of the settings that are customizable. When this camera comes out of the box, it has a very limited menu and you have to turn off the, the guided menu and enhance, get the enhanced menu on there. Um, and so the settings are a little bit tricky to learn. There are tons of videos on YouTube about how to do this. And there's actually channels just dedicated to this camera only. Um, but this camera is $599. And in my opinion, it's probably one of the, the coolest cameras that you can get for that price point. Um, but it takes a little bit of understanding on how to use it. And I'm still learning how to use it. And so I'm not, I haven't mastered the camera yet. I'm committed to learning it and, and knowing how to use it. But um, if you're not committed to it, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But you're probably going to be able to build or get more stuff out of it if you learn how to use it and things. I have an ND filter on here too, because um, when I go outside and I film outside, um, it definitely needs an ND filter because the, the background will be blown out and too white and stuff um, without having to put the aperture way up. So um, that being said, I use this camera. Um, I'll show you what the microphone sounds like on this camera. And I also, this is the mic that I use with this camera all the time. I also have a powered road shotgun mic, which has really good audio, but sometimes I forget to turn it on and off. And so then I end up with content that's not usable. So I will share with you each one of these, um, what they sound like. Obviously, here is the first test. We'll get into the first test here in just a second. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. Okay, so this is the Canon EOS M50 with the internal microphone. I have the setting on the ISO at auto, which ISO controls how dark it is. The uh, shutter speed is at 50 frames a second, and the frame rate is at the recording it's at 1080 at 24 frames per second so i think that this camera is in general like a, a really solid camera i like the features on it you can do really cool time lapses and um engaging content that's like that the time lapse settings are really cool um, i really enjoy the custom settings that you can do you can program all of the buttons on it so that you can change things and make it really really custom but that like with those additional settings is a little bit more of a learning curve so that, this is right here with the internal mic. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like with the Rode mic on it now. All right, so same camera with the Rode mic and um, you can tell the difference here. I think that this is probably, um, for most people, this is as much as they would need to get um, just because like if you bought a really expensive camera like a Sony a7 III or like a full frame mirrorless camera or like an 80D or something like that, unless you're gonna be going like full time in vlogging, not full time, but if that's going to be a huge component of your business, um, then I I would suggest getting something like this because at five ninety nine, um, you can get also a kit with with all of the components and um, it's a great price in general um, for all of the features and and things that you get. So I really like this camera for that reason. Okay, here here comes the GoPro now. All right, so this is the GoPro here. Um, 
and right now it's shooting at 1080 at 24 frames a second. I tried to keep the frame rates the same in this video so that you could get a good comparison. If you do 60 frames a second, it looks super crisp and like kind of jittery in general, um, which is okay. If you like that kind of a look, that's totally cool. Um, but I think that this is pretty cool. So this is the landscape mode. You can also shoot in portrait, um, but you can tell how wide the angle of this lens is. So you can see all of the background here that's going on in, in my video. Um, and this is great for exam rooms and things like that. But you can tell the difference on what the audio sounds like um, here with this camera. This camera is $299, um, and that's a great price, I think, for all of the features that you get. Also that it shoots in 4K at 60 frames a second, that's super impressive. And um, this is completely waterproof without any housing, which is a definite plus. It's really a bulletproof camera, and um, it has a fantastic stabilization that is um, custom, not custom, but it's, it's set up so that it makes it seem like you're really stabilized. What it does is it just focuses on the center and it um, basically will crop out the outside. But it's amazing if you see some of the action cam stuff that people do like riding on mountain bikes and stuff, they say that you don't need a gimbal, it's an automatic stabilizer and it definitely is noticeable and impressive. So I really like that. You also use the GoPro app to edit this, so that's really cool. Okay, camera, I don't know if it uses a different microphone. I have a case on the phone right now, um, so I'm not sure really what I'm shooting right now or what it looks like. So hopefully I'm kind of centered in the screen here, but I'm sure that there's a different crop on the cameras, meaning like one is closer and one is further away. I'm um, just because of the way that it's set up. This camera is um, amazing at taking pictures too. It makes really good pictures uh, easily. So that's a plus. Um, with each one of the other cameras too, though, you have um, like the photography element that you can take pictures as well. So uh, that is it. What do you think? It's going to just be a personal decision based on, I think, number one, what your budget is, how much production quality you're looking for, what settings are important to you, uh, and like the, the use that you're going to do. I think um, that a lot of businesses would probably be good with just having a their iPhone or a GoPro as a secondary. Um, you can do some really cool things with this, like if you wanted to strap it to um, a dog in your veterinary practice or like have just the, the size of this camera makes it really easy to use. And I think that that's really cool. Um, so that's it. I would love to know what you think though and what your plans are and what you're really trying to go for. So um, be sure to let me know. But thanks for watching and I'll...